Next up, while we're a little icebreaker, we're going to bring out one of our favorites. He's going to do a little stand up here for you guys. If I could bring him out, Marty, come on out, Marty. Marty's going to do a little icebreaker for you guys and get you guys all nice and warm. Get up for Marty. Hello. How's everybody doing? Punta Cana, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a round of applause for that. So uh, I didn't know I was going to be doing this until about five minutes ago. And they're like, do you want to perform for like the most people you've ever performed for in your entire life? Do you want to become an international superstar? And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. But I'm not entirely rehearsed. So if I swear and you're offended, I apologize. But if I swear more than five times in a row, Brian is going to have to come out and save me. Because that means I'm panicking. But uh, no, this is great. This Puna Kana is awesome. Can we have one more? I'm, I'm literally ecstatic about this. One more round of applause. This whole just relax and don't pay money and just eat until you puke thing is doing fantastic for me. This is going to do wonders for my depression. And uh, I recently got diagnosed with depression by like an actual doctor, uh, which is an important distinction to make because I've had friends and family telling me I'm depressed for years, but I didn't get it because I didn't, I didn't feel depressed, but apparently I was acting depressed. And one day, I realized that I was starting every sentence with, uh, uh, well, I was like, maybe, maybe I should talk to somebody about this. So uh, I went to the doctor, and um, I was expecting them to diagnose my depression with, like, science. Um, you know, I wanted someone to, like, swab my cheek for depression enzymes or sample my urine for melancholioids or something. Just some amount of, like, look at my body, please. Like, but um, apparently, the most scientific way we have to diagnose depression to this day is a pamphlet. <laughs> it's a pamphlet with a questionnaire. And the pamphlet is called, No, Really, How Are You? <laughs> it's got a picture of a sad woman on the front, like, mm. And inside is, uh, there's 15 questions. And if you say yes to eight of them, you are most likely depressed. They use most likely, even in like the, the description. And at first the questions are really like just generic. Like, are you experiencing stress at work? Are you having trouble sleeping? And I'm like, this applies to a lot of people. But about midway through, they get a lot more specific. Like, um, have you ever missed a party or a social gathering because there was too much cool stuff on the internet? All right. We love the internet. Yeah, play to the audience. Do you have what you would call a good pair of sweatpants? <laughs> Is returning your Netflix DVDs to a mailbox a big day for you? <laughs> Do you start your sentences with a prolonged sigh and a well? And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that actually sounds really familiar. So I took the quiz, and hey, I passed. Uh, so the doctor says, yes, you are depressed. And I'm like, all right, well, what can I do to cure this depression, or at the very least, hide it from my friends and family so I don't have to hear about it so much? And she said, well, you could cut back on drinking. And I said, next. <laughs> and then she said, well, you could focus more on your hobbies and pastimes which is weird because he just said to drink less. <laughs> so I didn't know what to make of that. I asked her, does a beard count as a hobby? Because that's, that's what I got going for me right now. And she said, no, Marty, that's actually another sign of depression. <laughs> it was number 13 on the quiz. Did you miss that? And I was like, hold on. Is your beard long enough to braid or have its own nickname? Yeah, that's, that sounds like me. Uh, but that's the thing. is, I take some offense to that question uh, because there was probably a time 
when a beard this length was a signifier to the world that said like, hey, I'm depressed, or I obviously sleep in an abandoned school bus. <laughs> but that time and place is not Los Angeles 2013. <laughs> this beard makes me the king of the hipsters when I go out. <laughs> thank you, thank you hipsters. This beard has more friends than I do, <laughs> at least on Facebook. And so it's to me, it's very strange. But the thing is, people come up to me all the time and they're like, sweet beard, bro. And I have very little to respond with that. I usually just say, thanks, I made it myself. <laughs> Which I stole out of the big book of dad jokes. But uh, yeah, with <laughs> this thing keeps shooting smoke at me and hissing like it's angry, like no more beard jokes. Well, tough shit, you got more coming. So, the, the beard, they have, the thing is, the doctor's right, it's not a hobby. A hobby is something you put time into, and this grows out of my face automatically. I don't know how to break that to people, but they always want to know stuff. And every time they come up, they have, like, questions about it. And the first question is usually, can I touch it? I want to touch it. And it's mostly dudes asking me if they can touch it. I'm like, you can, you, if you applied yourself, you could make your own, so go on ahead. And I usually let people touch it. Or I did. Um, I let people touch it as long as they touch it like this. You know, little petting gestures. But if they start to run their fingers through it, <laughs> that distresses me, so I usually say, yeah, it feels just like my pubes. Pubes! Punta Cana pubes! Oh Lord, where was I? All right. Uh, so, but that's the thing, is I don't have much to say after that. Like once you start stroking my beard. Oh, somebody also, another question that they had while stroking my face was, is it flammable? <laughs> I realized their hand was like this far away from a thing that could totally just pull me all over the room if they wanted to. So that's why I stopped letting people touch it. I realized I was inviting a very particular type of crazy into my life with that. But um, I do want to say that with uh, several people just coming up and acting like my face is something exotic and asking if they can touch my hair, I would like to apologize to the one black kid who went to school with me in my all white middle school because everybody was like, hey, can I touch your hair? and I apologize for that. Also, racial humor at work. Wonderful job, Marty. <laughs> Punta Cana alcohol. Thank you. All right, so with all of that, uh, I, I did talk to the doctor again, and she was like, well, if you don't want to shave your beard, you don't want to lose weight, you don't want to stop drinking, what can we do to get rid of this depression? And I just said, uh, can I just take the test again? <laughs> and remarkably, I got fewer than eight yes answers this time. I was cured of depression. Uh, but uh, thank you all very much for being the largest and most loving audience I've ever had. That's what I'm talking about. Loud noises. Let's give it up for Brian. Yeah, you, you to... <laughs> Lovely. Give it up for Marty one more time, you guys.